Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. Today we're going to be taking a look at a vest. Now I mainly feature uniforms, sometimes helmet, and I've even done boots a few times, but I have a lot of cool vests that I want to start sharing, and this one is really neat. So what this is, is part of the interceptor body armor system. This is the outer tactical vest, and it was used in the um, early 2000s in the war on terror. There's an upgraded version called the IOTV, the improved outer tactical vest, but this is the OG version that was first produced in 2000, I believe. So basically, um, the previous vest used by the US was the PASGET, the personal armor ground system for troops. Um, and, you know, by the late 90s, it was getting pretty old. It was introduced in the mid 80s, and they wanted something new. The other one was really only good for, you know, shrapnel and fragmentation, not really for ballistics. But with this one, you had soft armor and an optional uh, hard armor component, you know, ceramic plates. So I believe it was developed in 1998 and finally put into production by the year 2000. And then in the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq, this thing actually saw use. So it's a very iconic piece of kit. You can see a lot of Marines wearing it in photos of the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Uh, it definitely stands out because they were issued a lot of woodland pieces in a desert environment. So unfortunately, you know, that was kind of unfortunate. And then apparently the protection wasn't really as good as hoped for. Um, so that's why it had to be upgraded as well. But this particular piece was manufactured in 2002, I believe and some of the Kevlar panels have a date of 2006. So I'm not sure if this was actually ever used. I'm sure it was issued because the, the, like the soft armor panels have been swapped out. Um, but it's a very clean piece, very little wear and tear. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. So the first thing you're gonna notice is, uh, you know, it's just a pretty regular vest, but there are um, places for attachments so like right here where these buttons are you could attach a like collar to protect your neck and there's also attachments for deltoids to protect your biceps and i believe even a groin protector um so yeah it's pretty modular in that sense additionally the front of the vest features a lot of um molly webbing or pals i forget what it's called um I forget what the P stands for, but it's something ladder system. But yeah, basically just webbing to put pouches, uh, whatever you really need. So modular in that aspect. You can see that there's a little bit of wear on some of the nylon fabric. Um, not really sure how this came undone, but overall it's in really good condition. And this one is produced in the you know regular U.S. woodland design. However, these these were produced in uh, multiple patterns including a uh, DCU woodland um, coyote brown that's a solid color and there's definitely a few more um, my mind's it's escaping my mind right now but uh, yeah if you look them up you'll see that these are pretty widely available in a lot of different colors but this is like I think the first color they were made in so pretty cool so if you want to undo this and get to the inside you got to take off this first strip right here which mainly consists of Velcro and three metal buttons. So you got the Velcro here, the metal, bu metal buttons on the side, and then here you can see the stitching, how the uh, webbing is stitched in. And then right here you have another flap. So I believe this is where you would insert your plates if you wanted to uh, insert them in here. And I don't know what this, this strap is for, but might have been for securing the, the plate in there, but um, pretty interesting right there. And then there's more Velcro down here, this whole big strip, and then these three squares. And then I just want to note as well, there's more uh, gray nylon webbing right there. So here's the actual soft armor location. So again, we got more Velcro right here. And this one's a little bit trickier to undo. But if we undo it, 
I'm not going to take the whole panel out. It takes a little bit of time, but we can see right here the date on this one is 2006, 06. Um, yeah, date of manufacture, July 2006. Interesting. So it's a little bit later than the rest of the vest. And I'll show you the main tag on the inside here. <clears throat> so this is the primary manufacturer's tag. Body armor interceptor, base vest carrier, size large, chest 41 to 45 inches. And this was made by Point Blank. Actually, no, Unicor. A lot of these were made by Point Blank, though. And I guess I was incorrect on the date. These, this one was made in 2006. This confused me down here where it says the contract, because I believe this O2 is for the, it was a 2002 contract, but this particular one was made in 2006. But yeah, it looks really clean. I don't think this was really ever, you know, uh, you know, worn into a combat environment. Um, it is just remarkably well taken care of and uh, a good example. But yeah, very uh, long instructions for cleaning. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, conditions for turning it in. So, you know, up here is more of the, the neck system. You know, we've got all these metal buttons back here. I believe that that's where the, uh, the kind of yoke slash collar thing attaches to. But overall, a lot of Velcro, a lot of buttons in this particular system. And um, from when I was doing a little bit of research online, apparently it wasn't really up to uh, really great ballistic protection at the time. Apparently some vests couldn't even stop a nine millimeter round from penetrating, which is pretty unfortunate. So that's why later on they were upgraded to the improved outer tactical vest and now I believe uh, they're upgrading to something else. So this one has the same exact thing, July 2006. So we'll flip it over real quick, take a look at the back. On the back here you do have some buckles for adjusting you know how it sits around you if you want it tighter or a little bit loose. You got a little bit of more uh, webbing here on the back. Um, and then you got a handle here too, which is pretty interesting. More Velcro here, and then I believe, oh, I don't know why there's a towel in here, but I guess the previous owner might have put it in there for cleaning or something. I believe this pouch is for the rear plates. So something to make note of. I'm not sure exactly where the groin protector would attach, but the deltoids would probably attach somewhere around here. Um, maybe, I don't know exactly, but overall pretty piece, pretty cool piece of history. Definitely, um, I don't know, very satisfying to look at. I feel like it's just a very well made and well designed in terms of uh, just how it looks. It, it looks pretty cool. And yeah, uh, this, this is a particularly well preserved piece. Oh, hold on. There's another tag back here. Let's see. Oh, you know what? It looks like I already have the yoke attached. Yeah, there it is. I don't remember exactly how I attached it, but yeah, so the yoke is like this part around right here. See, like all this stuff. So the base vest would just be everything minus this. So, yeah. Overall, pretty cool. And if you're looking to buy one of these, sometimes they can be a little bit pricey, but I got a pretty good price on this. I think I only paid like a hundred so bucks. Um, not really practical for you know personal protection, but if you're a collector, very cool piece to have in the collection. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely got some pretty cool vests um, coming on the way. I'll make more videos. I got a pretty cool like SWAT style vest. And yeah, keep an eye out. Have a good day.